So now, just to wrap up, I want to talk a little bit about how, uh, how to think about designing an optimal unemployment insurance system. Uh, so in this setup, if I want to pick like the optimal generosity for UI, how would I do it? And so we know when we're thinking about optimal policy, we have to put ourselves in the shoes of a benevolent social planner, and we're trying to look at what the welfare function is like and how we can uh, design policy to maximize that welfare function. Okay, so let's go over that uh, here. Um, so we're trying to design optimal unemployment insurance. Uh, so the question is, uh, what is um, the social welfare function here? So social welfare is just, uh, you know, it's a sum of the utilities of all the workers that are involved here. So it's just the utility of a representative or the expected utility of a representative worker. Um, and so we can use, um, we can use all the work we've done. So social welfare is going to be uh, U of CE. That's the utility of workers who are employed. How many workers are employed? It's going to be L, the employment rate, plus 1 minus L times U of CU. That 1 minus L is just the unemployment rate, okay? Times U, and U of CU, that's the utility of the workers who are unemployed. And of course, all of these workers initially, they incurred a search effort which we, you know, which we said that this utility from search effort would be epsilon carry. So this quadratic cost is this utility of search effort, what we had called you know, psi of E initially. Okay. So that would be uh, social welfare. And uh, the government tries to, so basically the government or the social planner, let's, let's say, The social planner is going to choose UI to maximize uh, social welfare. Um, and but here, you know, what uh, what's a bit tricky is that the, the social planner is facing some constraints, subject to the following constraints. So the social planner is going to choose UI. So basically, you know, there are several ways to look at it, but he's going to choose like how far CU and CE are, the two consumptions, or how far U of CU and U of CE are. Basically, the social planner is going to look at how well we want to ensure people who are employed and unemployed. And what are the constraints that uh, the social planner is going to face? So that's quite interesting. So first of all, of course, the social planner is going to face a resource constraint. So what that means is that, you know, workers who are employed, they produce some stuff, and that stuff can be you know, captured in part by the government and redistributed to people who are unemployed, you know, through taxation. Um, but of course, the sum of what uh, employed people consume and unemployed people consume, that can't be more than what's produced in the economy. Like the, the government cannot, just out of thin air, uh, make up consumption. So the total amount of consumption has to be equal to what is produced in the economy. That's the resource constraint. And it's, you know, with a bit of algebra, you realize it's equivalent to the budget constraint of the government. It's just saying that what the government distributes uh, cannot be more than what the government uh, taxes. Okay, so there is a budget constraint for the government. which is in fact equivalent to the resource constraint in the economy.
And so what is that resource constraint? Well, it's the sum of the consumption, the economy cannot be has to be equal to what's produced. Okay, that makes uh, that makes sense. So we have L times C E plus one minus L times C U. And all this stuff here is just total consumption. So it's the consumption of the employed worker plus the consumption of um, the unemployed worker. That has to be equal to what is produced, and what is produced is output, we call it y. And you know, if you want y, we, we said it was a function of the number of recruiters, so it's going to be here like a times n alpha. You know, where alpha is uh, less than one or one, depending on the shape of the production function. Um, so, you know, the government is not able to, uh, to distribute more consumption than this. So that's the first constraint. Second constraint is that, you know, I've been talking a lot about moral hazard, the fact that the government is not able to control the search effort of unemployed workers. You know, once you give them their incentives, um, the workers are going to do whatever they want to maximize their expected utility. Um, and so, um, basically, and the government has to take into account that workers are going to behave in a way that's optimal uh, for them. Um, so the government has to take into account workers' response. Okay. So what that means is that the search effort in the economy will be equal to you know, the optimal search effort, which we call the effort supply, which depends on tightness and on UI. So there is nothing you can do about it. And, uh, as a corollary, the number of people who are employed, which is L, is going to be given by the labor supply, you know, which captures both the optimal effort by workers and also the matching process. The government cannot sidestep the matching process. Okay. Uh, so this, you know, the government will take that into account. It will have to abide. So it can't. The government cannot bypass the labor supply, the effort supply. Okay. And then the last thing that the government has to take into account, of course, is so uh, the government has to take into account, you know, the workers' response, but the government also has to take into account the firm's response. And you know, the government cannot force firms to do, you know, anything else than what they want to do. So the, in the same way that the labor supply is there. The labor demand is there, and um, the government cannot do anything about it. So, in equilibrium, you know, the labor supply and the labor demand, they have to be equalized, and the government cannot do anything about that. So, the government has to take into account the fact that when you change UI, you're not only going to change the individual response of the worker, but you're also going to change what the equilibrium is. And there's nothing you can do about it. Okay, um, so the government also has to take into account the equilibrium response. And so that means that the tightness theta will be a function theta of ui. That function theta of ui is, is you know, given by the equilibrium condition, you know, L D theta UI is equal to L S theta UI. So when you change UI here and here, you're going to change theta. Okay, and the government is going to take that into account. Okay, so the government takes into account that the worker's response change takes into account that the equilibrium may change and of course is subject to a re uh, resource constraint. And given all of this, the government is trying to maximize social welfare by choosing UI. Okay, so that's, uh, that's how it works. And in fact, uh, so if we, if we are looking at solving that problem, and the solving the problem is a little bit technical. Uh, it's not very easy. If you look at some of the readings, uh, there's a paper that I wrote with um, Saez and Lene in which we actually solve mathematically, you know, the problem of the, of the government and we describe how optimal UI works. It's, it's quite involved. Um, so I'm not going to go over it here. 
And if you're interested, you should look at it. Uh, it's not, you know, it's not super complicated, but there is quite a bit of algebra. But here I'm just going to give you at a high level uh, the approach that we follow to solve uh, to solve that problem. 